All right, everybody rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, before I sit down, um, it's a proud day for us that uh, we would like to welcome Kelly Collins as a new town administrator. So everybody would like to uh, say hi. This is Kelly Collins. Yeah. Tom would like to take your picture. Yeah. And Tom is a photographer. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Good to meet you, Kelly. It's nice to meet you. Tom, 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 do you want her to stand up front with all of us? Well, well, well all of us should be in the middle. Stand in the back? That's where she's going to be most of the time, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. 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 And Tony's going to try to sneak out the photo again. I think this is well balanced. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, we get, oh, boy, girl, boy, girl. Okay. Okay. Boy, girl, boy, yeah. All right. Hey, how about some smiles here? It's there you go. Day. Spring is finally here. And one more. Okay, I'll send you all. <laughs> Great. Thank you. We're going to get eight by ten strong. We're going to stay with the first thing. Taking a picture. We have a real deal on a nice frame. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, Kelly. <laughs> we'll hang frame. up there that next to Mr. Garvin. That's right. So she's already been broken in. She's been here for a couple of days. So everybody be patient and... Uh, it's going to serve us just fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, first on our agenda is our appointments and uh, Department of Public Works Director Lee Nichols. Lee, you want to come up, please? And can I ask my Yep, Seth. Yep, Seth Foreman. <laughs> for those who don't, don't know, Seth, this is my Foreman, Seth Garner. Here, Seth. Seth, Seth, what's the last name? Garland. Garland. G-A-R-L-A-N-Z. Yep. Okay, well, it's a pleasure of us having to you. Um, I got a couple of things I would like to bring up to the board to okay. see if they agree or disagree. And Seth's also here for one of those as well. Um, the first thing I'd like to address is I've had the crew um, approach me and ask if the board would approve a amended work week, like 410. Um, the benefits I see for the employee on that is they get more time with their family, it gives them an extra day. Um, they'd be able to plan appointments, try to plan appointments on their day off during the week instead of missing time from work. Happier employees. Um, the town benefits, if we went strictly with the four-day work week, everybody had the same day off. Um, you'd cut your fuel costs and electricity costs because the vehicles in the garage wouldn't be up and running on that day. Um, and Who would be here on Friday? So if there's anything happening? Well, I'm always on call, so. Correct, but I mean, who would be here? Nobody. 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 The other option to that mm -hmm. is going with um, a six-man crew, me included, if we could alternate it Fridays and Mondays, so three people get Fridays off, three people get Mondays off, you're still open five days a week. Um, I think that could sit better. Mm. Well, I will tell you that we've tried this before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you realize that, but we've tried this before. We did this many years ago, and the people and the board... Um, shut it down. I won't say that I'm against it, yeah. only because I would be more up to d discuss it a little further. I just, I, I just personally, as an employer, mm -hmm. I think the 10 hour day, you don't get, not that I'm, let me say this, I don't think that you get the right hour out of 10 hours as you do the eight. And what I mean by that is, is I think after the eight, you're tired, you just, it's, you're not getting, you're not getting, the town's not getting its full 
what they should get out of the employee. Now, it, it, it can vary to the employee. I mean, you get the employee that can go crazy forever mm -hmm. and ever and ever. Um, I know it hasn't always been a big, a big bang. Yeah, I know when Danny was a part of it, um, he didn't think it was the right thing. I don't believe Scott thought it was the right thing, not that I'm bringing him in here. Mm -hmm. I'm taking your thing. Yep. Well, you, you, do you think it's the right thing? I do, um, and I'll give you, as far as the time goes, once we have lunch on an eight hour day, by the time we get back up and working, if we're out ditching on pickpocket, we have an hour and a half, two hours, and we gotta pack up and start bringing everything back. That would give you an additional two hours in the afternoon. So you get back in your rhythm like you do in the morning before lunch. Um, How much do you like to work after lunch? All my lunch guys, is, all my guys <laughs> you know, I will disagree with you on that. The way me and Seth both run the shop, yeah. you work as hard at 9 o'clock in the morning as you work at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I do not like people standing around. And I know that, and I believe that. And, uh, and I think it would, the other thing, I think it would work for the highway department because we're used to working 15, 20, 24 hours in the wintertime, and it'd give us a little bit of a break in the summertime to spend some time with our families that we miss all during the winter. So this j would just be a summer schedule? No, strictly summer. And it would go back yeah. in October? I was, th I was thinking yeah, May October, 1st. November. I was thinking May 1st, October 1st is our set summer. So it would be for five months? Yeah. Because you never know when you get in snow. We've had snow in October five, actually, before. actually. May, June, July, August, yeah. September. Yeah. Tony, do you recall the reasons why it never worked before? I seem to remember the Board of Selectmen referring to um, difficult to start early in the morning if you're, if you're out on a, a populated road. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want you next to my house at 6.15. And I took that into consideration. Yeah. If what we did this, it would be 6.30 to 5. That way we wouldn't be out on the road until 7 o'clock. Because I thought about that. Nobody wants to bash and right. crash and bang in front of their house. Mm. By the time we get set up on the road and everything else, it does give us more work time during the day. I'll, I'll agree with you there. I didn't think of it in that way. As you know, it, it, it's always when you get back from lunch, you, you're just getting back into the routine and it's 3.30 and they want to quit. Right. No, I know. I got five employees as it is. <laughs> um, We're already home at 3.30. Pretty much. <laughs> they was today at 2.30. Yep. <laughs> Um, but those are the benefits. Um, what do you guys think? Well, I think we should take on our advisor and have a further discussion. Okay, that would yeah. be fair, and, and and I'm assuming you realize that anyway. Oh, um, yeah, so I just want to bring it up. And I just want you to know I'm not against it. I, yeah. I, I will debate it um, right. because I'm just thinking of it as an employee myself, but um, I'm not against it, that's all. Okay. No, I'm not really against that. So. Okay. All right, we with can anything, talk. when we change things, you have to think of the whole picture. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, how does that, how does that, how does that work into the remaining departments, and how they, how do you think they're going to feel about that, especially across the street? You think because they, they, they've, they've, they've brought it to my attention a couple of times about, and I, I was trying to explain it today, and I, I couldn't really remember because it was a month ago, but um, about some timing issues about their lunches and things like that because mm -hmm. they really don't have time to eat lunch because they really don't have a place to eat mm -hmm. it but they could go across the street is what i said but mm -hmm. but they're um, only open four days four even days they work right. yeah I mean, mm -hmm. and thursdays is a work day for them and open yes. four days <coughs> so it's kind of hard for them not to have that five day thing right. is mm -hmm. how i looked at it yeah um i you know they were talking about um they're having a hard time eating their lunch because they get such a they get such a routine of call that they got to be something getting banging at the door and when they go to sit they really don't have a place to even sit there yeah. they can yeah. go across the street because mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have a lunchroom across yeah. the street and personally I would go across the street so you didn't have to deal with it but mm -hmm. their job's a little more turnover yes. so it's probably harder for them mm -hmm. to to meet so I think but you I, need to think about what they're all <coughs> uh, and I will. This is the first time I'm hearing of this, and yeah. it shouldn't be, personally. Well, no, I think it, it was just me asking questions a few months ago, a month or so ago, and I just asked what was good, you know, what, what, what are things, I was more interested in what, mm -hmm. what could be done. Um, 
But that was as far as I went with it. Now they had, they had come to me because I guess before <coughs> Scott came in, they were working an altered shift on Thursday, at, and they wanted to go back to that. And I had broached Teresa about it, and she had said that's what Scott, her and Scott had come up with for an agreement. Well, we're we're, we're moving away from Scott. Yeah, yeah, and, and I realize. And, and I realize. this is you. And uh, but, you know, uh, I'm going to take an advisement myself how you think. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, but I also think else. of it as an employer myself. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't want to give mine. I don't think I would get as much value out of the 10-hour day as I do the eight. Mm -hmm. um, but mine is different. You know, it's different, and I, I would I would at least run that. I will at least debate that and discuss it mm -hmm. without a, without a no by all means. Okay. You good with that, William? Yeah, we, it needs more discussion. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. What else you got? Um, the other thing I have is UNHT2 approached me. Um, they, I told them I'd have to present it to the board, and this is something else you guys will probably want to discuss and not make a decision tonight. Um, they wanted to know if we'd be willing to sponsor a couple of equipment classes up here in June. All the classes they do are sponsored by town. It's not abusive to the equipment. Like, they want to do an excavator and loader class one week in June. It's with the excavator, you move in loose dirt from here and you put in loose dirt over there. It's all, it's more finesse to get more of a uh, finesse oh, with the yeah. equipment. Yeah, and it's all highway guys. It's not like you're dealing with kids here. You're, yeah. you're dealing with highway municipal workers that have been on the equipment. What does that benefit the town or it benefits you guys as workers? One of, Should you be part of that? One of the benefits is if we host it, they'll give us four free seats in those classes. They're usually $60 a piece, 60 to $100 a piece for us to go. So they'll, by hosting it, they'll allow us to, yeah. to participate yes. on a free charge, which is that's good. And with the, I mean, we have one new guy in now. Yep. And Joe's reasonably new on equipment, so yep. he's another one. And we have another one coming on Never board. Never know, so. enough. You like yep. at least going to school now for his transfers? No. Um, I already got the transfer station what was certification. It, the waste, wastewater. Um, I'm looking into wastewater. Yes, yeah. So education. And is that great. comes up, I believe, in August. Um, but yeah, they they approached me, and I told them I'd have to bring it to the board. Where would that take place down there at the at the? Uh, at the we, I talked to them. I think our best bet would be to do the excavator training. You know that low areas you come in the transfer station yep, yep. if you're looking at the bird pit yeah. and the scale oh, okay. right yeah. in there yeah. and the loader training right over by in the town garage because we have all the stockpiles that they yeah. can dig in yeah. would they provide us with an insurance rider in case they break something that's something i will have to bring up to them yeah i would think that we'd have to have yeah. some kind of insurance rider yeah. that would yeah. certify um, that class i'll, I'll so that i would imagine home. they get that i mean that's I would think state so. probably yeah. right yeah I would think so, because like I said, that's the only way they do equipment classes is towns host it. So I will check with them on that. Yeah, they come in with their own workman's comp in case one of the guys fall off the truck. They're not going to hold us responsible for breaking a leg, twisting an ankle. So that will come well. with, the, with, yeah. With, yeah. The, with the state. I would imagine I'll bring that, with that up that. as well. Yeah, just make sure you get figure that all out and bring it back to us. Okay. I don't see any reason why not. That could be. Um, I can answer those questions and email you probably next week sometime. Yeah. Okay. And the insurance binder, right? Okay, and my last big one. You, you all have seat belts in those chairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it was brought up last year, I believe it was in the budget when we put in for the uh, vehicle line of replacing that C5500, the one time. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Seth now. He's done all the work on it, the investigation, the prices. He's got two different prices. Um, so it's all yours. Awesome. <laughs> okay. now, I've never done this before, so I kind of, I don't know if I have too much stuff, not enough stuff or what, but I kind of printed off a couple things as far as replacement wise. So we'll do it. You want, you're looking to replace the 550? Yeah. Yes. That's um, one that and is, is that the next one that's in line for a replacement? Yeah. That's what we've been talking about the past yeah. couple of years. And where does that stand now? As in, um, is that going to be a good trade in or is it something that we want to keep? Or? Honestly, in my opinion, I would probably seek to keep the truck 
as a spare because right now we do not have a backup truck. If one does go down, then we're pulling trucks off other routes. Mm -hmm. and it's making the whole thing work slower. Um, what do we do with that truck? I know we do. We need to start everybody else. <laughs> it's the truck that handles the in-town route. It's also the smallest truck that we have, other than the pickup truck. So it tows the sweeper. It does the York raking. All things which we can do with a new truck, but as of right now, it's the only one we have that can do it. Is that the one that broke the shoe? Several. Frequently, and that's several times. I think it was that one that was down fall off. Yeah, that last blizzard, we tried keeping up with the end down with the deck up, and that's on the roads now. So right if it's breaking off. down and it's at, let's let's not say it, uh, like let's say that it's it's at its end of its term, would we be better? To, I would think that you'd still look to see what we get for a trade in for it to see if it would give us a better value for the people of the, you know, for the taxpayer. Um, because, I don't have a problem keeping it. If, I mean, to me, if, if, it's, if it's good and you think it's good and it's something that's valuable to you. Yeah. I, I think the, and we'll, we'll look into the trade in it. Um, I agree with Seth, without having a backup, especially for the in-town room, you're trying to pass now with the pickup. Well, you broke you, down this year. You was you were behind. And oh yeah, it showed. And the well, it's not show, but I think you got to. It showed by the people talking to you. Yeah, about and it. the problem we have with the truck, compared to like the ten wheelers when they go down, hmm. we can still get parts for them. Yeah. The last time it broke down, we lost a hub in the back of it. You it took Seth a month to find it. He finally found a guy out in California. That guy went to his place in Wisconsin. Or Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, right. And then she, that truck was down for a month in the winter. Because you couldn't get the pot. If it were yeah. a spare, and like I said, we'll still look into the trade-in, but if it were a spare, we could afford a month of Just having that laid up because we have the new truck. What else do we do with that other than the plow? You look great, gravel roads. You look great, yeah. gravel roads. Sweet. Sweet. So it's, it's like a multi-purpose vehicle. It's, it's kind of like I go to. It's the next biggest thing to the pickup truck. I mean, you would cold patch with it. It's... Well, you can't get the big trucks, that's where that goes. Is that diesel or gas? It's diesel, and it's also four-wheel drive, which is yeah. another key component to it. So what is it you want to replace it with? A Freightliner M2-106. Um, a little bit bigger, higher GVW on it. This is actually the proposal. The, um... right, it has a greater so... GVW on the Freightliner. So, so in comparison, this is an upgrade. Yes. yes, and it's not a standard upgrade. This is this is looking. F what do we plan to do with this? Pretty much everything that this fifty five hundred is fulfilling now. It's just what is it? What's this fifty five hundred not doing? Taking the weight and the amount of work that we do with it. So the GB the GBW raises that up so that you can do what you're asking. Yes, that truck platform there can go anywhere from twenty six thousand to sixty six thousand pound GBW. Yeah. So. Um. And what's the one cover rate? Does the plows and all that 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 fits the 5500 fit? This this is a is this a 55 or 65? That is a it's a it's a the freight liner. Freightliner. It's an M2106. Um, it is a it's a higher weight class truck yep. than the 5500 is. Does the plow stuff fit it? Do we have to replow it? It would come with, like that right there is priced out to be replowed. The plows that are on the, the 5500 now are pretty well worn. So this would be completely upgraded. Upgraded what we need. everything. Yeah. All right, just. Um, our, the 5500 we have now uh, has a GBW of 19.5, 19,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. We weighed it at the transfer station. Empty, it weighs 17,320 pounds. And that's just with plow gear, front plow on the wing, right. and the dump plow. You just put a ton in the back and that's it. We've been, that truck since day one's had a three yard bucket of sand in the back. If we always run it, and we weighed it, it weighs 29,920 pounds. So you're 10,000 pounds over what it should be on it. And it's been doing that for So years does now. this come just chassis and we have to put the body on it? No. That price there is with the, with that the body. Price is this is with body, because I was going to say, I mean, it seems a pretty high. With, no, with that's, so that's, the body with all the and the, 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 the chain yes. in the body. Yeah. Yeah. Turn, the turn in the key and go. Yes. Yes. There's no yes. other waiting period for it when it's dropped off. Yeah, that's um, ready to go. So do we have uh, um, money in the CRF for this? We return? do. Um, we had 109 um, last year, and then with the budget that passed this year, 
That was 77, I believe, so that put us up to 186. And that would give us still that's enough to. So just, just so you guys can see it, that, that's what the cost is. Well, so we don't put the money in our capital reserves until July after the tax bills go out, though. Right. So yep. what's the lead time on getting this bill or delivered? Um, it would take a couple months for it to be built and delivered. It's not like something we go pick up tomorrow. Uh, plows, those bodies are all built to order. They're not. So I guess her question would be, that would be a question that you need to You know don't yet. have the money today. We don't right. have okay. And we don't want to create a cash flow problem. Right, okay. 77000 is a lot yes. before taxes get billed in around June mm -hmm. 1st and due July 1st. Okay. And we don't normally, this town doesn't normally put its money in the capital reserve funds until that money comes in. I'm not saying we couldn't do that, but I... No, unless, but that's a great point. Unless okay. there's an emergency, I wouldn't recommend shorting your cash flow right i think when months. we bought the 2015 10 wheeler that we have i think we got that around october november it was, time yeah, frame. It was fall. and i think it was for that same reason you know they ordered it like in june july time frame right and they built it over the summer i want to say we picked it up in like october is this the only quote you have on this for that particular truck for that particular, yeah, for that particular truck, truck. Yes. i do have another one for a kenworth um T270, which has the same engine and transmission, same weight rating, uh, same weight rating, same GVW, but it's lacking a couple other things. Uh, the warranty it doesn't come on the same warranty as the Freightliner does. This one comes. This is a better warranty. That's a five. Imagine. That's a five-year warranty yeah. on that. Yeah. It, it explains that in the back. Yeah, I see that. And uh, also on the Kenworth to put the plows on it, it doesn't have front frame extensions like the Freightliner does to begin with. So that is all added on after. So it's more upfitting, upfitting on it? Yes. This and this one only comes with a one year warranty. How big is the body on there? Yeah, I want you to plow it. It's a nine foot body on there. So it's a nine foot body? Nine foot body. I would, I, would, I would understand it better by yardage. Uh, a foot longer than the bed in your truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. A little wider. Um, yeah. Yardage wise, I mean, basically it would come down to weight is a yard of wide. I mean, you could put a whole lot of wood chips in there. I but mean, you got a three yard on this slip you had. The 55. The, what was that? that there like a three, so this would be like a five. Weight weight. Well, I can tell you that the 5500 has a nine foot body in it, and three yards of sand fits snugly. Yeah. Spilling a couple corners. Yeah. So. So roughly, and I don't know if this is wet sand or not, you're looking at 10, 12, 12,000 pounds for three hours. Yeah, so closer to five, probably. Yeah. And the curb weight, I have that written down on that truck there, is a little bit more than the 5,500, obviously being a heavier built truck. But what else? Is. What else? So just to, to go, what Leno said when he, when he says turnkey, I mean, it comes in the ad, is there's no more additives. I mean, that's yeah, it. Right? Yeah, that's it. It's ready. So it's, it's all in this. The it's in this package it. price of, yeah. of this one. The only thing we'd have to do is put the emblems on the side and put yeah. a radio on it. Yeah. So we would we would go out and get two other bits. Yeah, Seth can work on those. I did. I, like I said, I did have one from Kenworth. Well, we should do apples to apples if we're going to look at a Freightliner. So it's a little better set up than what Kenworth. Was, what, was this, what was this number? Just out of curiosity. Um, in, that, in talking with Seth, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. like that Kenworth, that's what a lot of the towns are starting to go with. Um, but it's hard. You're kind of in between a six-wheeler right. and a one-ton. The weight class. So there's not a whole lot of trucks like that for different bids. I mean, he can come close, but it's not going to be apples to apples. Right, no, well, I, mean, I guess, I guess, I guess what, what he's saying, what he's saying is, this. I mean, Oh, yeah, just yeah. get the same bid from other companies. Yeah, we can Same get apples to apples. You're talking $65,000 difference between the two. That, that Kenworth there does not, that quote does not have the body. So this on. is, this yeah. is just a rough chassis. That's just yeah. cabin chassis. Just cabin chassis. That's yeah. what I thought. I was yes. going to say, because that seems like an awful difference. Yeah, yeah no. that was a difference we'd go with. <laughs> we take the yeah. happy one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I didn't I'm know explain that. that. Yeah. No, all right. Uh, and I like understand it. what you're looking at. No. Yeah. But like you said, on that Kenworth, too, they got to build out the front of the frame rails so they can get the plow yep. frame on Which means what welding, yeah. places to break, rust, yes, more maintenance down the road. Okay, so we're not against the truck, okay. but what we want is a little more homework to bring it more 
apples for apples, get us a couple bids, and that way, I, and I think I would just send a, a, another freight line a dealer and okay. see what you can do with the same yep. thing. It yep. seems to be the truck style you want to go with, but um, that I can't tell you anything about, but I'll leave that up to you. <coughs> okay. Okay, with that. Yeah. And I think that's all we got for you. Mm -hmm. You did good, Seth. Looks like you gave a lot of homework. There you go. <laughs> just a little more and you'll be able to have it. Okay. <laughs> There's a Freightliner dealership in Maine, just outside of Gorman, and the name yeah. of the town is escaping me right now. Yeah. As long as we don't pay Maine state tax. That's another you have it you have today. Today. There's no other Freightliner dealership yeah. in New Hampshire. There's but just remember that, that yeah. because that's something that, that you may not know is, is talk, when you talk to them, make yeah. sure they realize you're in New Hampshire because yeah. there's a difference in cost. Like I did try to price this truck through McDivitt, and they are a Western Star dealer, which is owned by Freightliner, mm -hmm. but they would not quote me a price against mm -hmm. Freightliner in New Hampshire. Oh, that must no, be I a like non-compete clause in their contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Okay. Good enough. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Good job. some other people here, but um, um, I just have done a little more research. As you know, uh, at a prior meeting, I had discussed some, some ideas I had about this issue, and I'm not going to repeat that because there's no need to do that. You can just go watch the video if you like. Mm -hmm. But I've done a little more thinking about this and a little more research, and you know, I think it was really interesting tonight because here we have what I would call the process of we, we just experienced the process with the, high, the, with the highway department of how we, uh, first of all, uh, discuss that whether there's a need for something and how we're going to get the best uh, value for the taxpayer. And there's a process that, that goes through with bidding and <coughs> discussions and, and all these things. And I was a uh, I'm a little bit troubled about the Drew Mill Dam issue, or, or let's just say Article 20. Not so much the dam. It's more about the article than mm -hmm. how it was done. Because I feel like half of the process was done, but the other half wasn't done. And, and by that I mean that, um, to my knowledge, or at least I don't believe the public has been shown any plans, any permits, any bids on this project. It's just, let's just, just call it a project, like any other project. And I think that this process that you would hold any town department to should be applied to any other expenditure of funds. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, really. I mean, there is accountability. And I know that I applaud the selectmen. I mean, every year you, you uh, try to be frugal. You, you ask our department heads to be frugal. And I know you, you, you do that. I, I appreciate it as a taxpayer. But and there was some other, I mean, I, and, and one, the last thing about that was that I had, you know, this talk about it being a fire pond down there up as, a, as a, a benefit. And I don't ever understand that there was a need established for a fire pond down there. I mean, it's not like we need a fire pond, so we need to fix this dam up. I, it just, it, it appeared to me that some group of people, a nonprofit, came to the selectmen a couple of times, they got the signatures, which I'm perfectly happy with that process. Anyone can can get 25 signatures and get a warrant article put on the ballot. But uh, I am concerned about this, and I know that you're looking into the legal aspect of it, because I did ask you three questions the last time I was here. I'll just finish up real quickly here. Another thing that really troubled me was that, you know, during the discussions that were brought to you, is that we never heard that I know from any of the abutters. 
And, and you know, looking on the town tax maps, it appears that this is a landlocked piece of land. And apparently there's some right away or something to go over to it. And it actually, there are a couple of parcels that like back up to this, you know, I just went on the town tax maps and took a look at it. And I mean, I think we really need to get some information from these people uh, via butters I'm talking about, like, and even butters around, do they, you know, do they favor this? Um, does the person who has a right of way to apparently to, to pass through to that parcel, is he going to want the public in and out of there, or, you know, regularly? Uh, and, and I just think this is part of the process that if, if we decide uh, that it is, you know, legal to dispense these funds, uh, that these are questions that I, I think need to be answered, and as you would any other organization or department. And last, um, I did ask that uh, one of my questions was uh, accountability measures uh, hopefully would be put in place to ensure that the money is appropriately spent. I, I trust that you will look after that. Um, I am concerned that you know the warrant article does say recreation. Okay, I mean I have it here, and it says I don't, I'm sure you're all familiar. Uh, ensuring the continuation of the Drew Mill Pond for recreation use. And so the public voted based on some of that language. And so, you know, I, I, I did ask you at the last one that, you know, what rights will the town acquire that ensure that the public is allowed and that the kind of the terms are spelled out? Can I get down there and drive my truck in and go fishing? Can I launch a canoe? And I think that the abutters need to be, uh, you know, part of this process because if they're directly affected, I mean, the public could be going in and out of there. I mean, someone mentioned at the last meeting that it's open to the public. I'm not sure that there's any rights that have been established by the public to, to pass over that person's parcel of land. And finishing right up, the, the big one for me is, are we going to, if we decide to uh, to give this money to this nonprofit, are we going to be setting a precedent? And my real concern is, does this mean, and you know, I hope people aren't thinking that I'm liking somebody or not liking somebody. I mean, it, this, it, this is a complicated issue, and, and it's, it is. concerns me that people just came and met with you a couple of meetings, and, and I, I respect their right to put a warrant article on the ballot. I have no issue with that. But does this mean, if we, if we go through with this and we actually hand these people $34,000, would that mean that any nonprofit in town can put a warrant article on the ballot with 25 signatures and say double their budget? You know, and I'll use, as, and I know, I, I'm not, I'm just using an example here, please. Uh, say the library. Now they negotiate or, or they go through the process, don't they, every year, and so do other nonprofits for the money that they get as an outside agency. Does that mean that they could, that if we set this precedent, and this is a question that I think should be asked, if we do this, will someone like that, and I'm not saying the library would ever do that, but a nonprofit be able to put an additional warrant article on here, call up all of their supporters, and say, hey, go vote this in. So it's complicated, like it always is. And I'm just trying to, to sort through this in my own mind. I, these are good people. They want to do a good thing. But it's also a private organization, you know, a nonprofit that's private. They could apply for grants. You know, there are grants possibly available to do some of these projects. And, and so um, so I, I think I've said these are the extra things that I thought about and, and kind of did a little bit. I don't think that them. any of them are bad questions at all. Yeah, yeah, I think I mean, they're all good questions. And, and I trust the selectmen. I will be behind the selectmen with their decision. I know that they're looking into this and that they're trying to do what's right. Well, this is one reason why we're not talking about it tonight because we mm -hmm. don't have any answers mm -hmm. for us for what we've asked. Yeah, that's, that's Once we find that out, I do I do know that they do have some plans and they do okay. have all these things and they have gone out and done some preliminary yep. bidding. Okay. I don't think that, uh, I don't think I as would, would give money away until I have the, that, the proper procedure of that, just like you said. I, I trust you um, on that. The landlock thing, I'm a little concerned about that. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, if you look at the town tax maps, 
for, you know, and they may not be as accurate as, I mean, that, that's a question that should be answered. And the about a thing, that's always a courteous thing anyway. So yeah. I believe well, in that. Well, Snooky Shea did speak, and he's one of the about it. Yeah, and, and I'm sure they all have been kind of talked about it. Oh, they probably already have been around, but that's a great question. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think the, the main abutter that, that would be the person whose land is being right. gone over, and and that, and it's if, more of a if it's open to the public, it's the, the traffic's going to increase. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, I, I would think so. So we'll leave it for that for the moment yeah. until we get mm -hmm. some better answers, and, uh, yeah. and um, I'm glad you asked them. Thank you, Jim. Well, thank you very much. And I Connie, you. could I ask you a question that sure. doesn't have anything to do with this? Um, since Spectrum has taken over, do they have to abide by the contract that we have with Time Warner? That's a good question. I should get an answer, <laughs> but I, you know, I don't think that Clearview would be able to ask that question oh. because the the contract is between the town okay. and Spectrum. So we should ask them. And, yeah. you know, I sent them a few emails over the years, and we had the, the second channel issue and all that, which we're not going to talk about now, but in the future. And um, they never would reply to me because, they, you know, we're, we're oh. just a nonprofit that means nothing to them. And, and the, I think the question would have to be, Okay. Come from the selectmen of these, the town and attorney. I think we should ask it. Oh, I do. And I think we're. Are we up for a renewal with them? No. No. We no. just did. We that, just right? did. We it. just did. It. Yeah. So we got a little bit. And of time. so, have they um, done the Paul School live like they said? No. The There's been no movement on either issue, and, okay. and we'll, that's something we, we need can, to know. Yeah, I, the selectmen was supportive of that, and yeah. I don't know what Teresa did because you you were supportive yeah. of both issues, but maybe right. we'll take that up on a different night if you wish. Yeah. But we've heard okay. nothing. We we know nothing. We're still doing things like we have done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. Thank you. I'm going to ask a question to go back to just 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 so that you can clarify an example for me. Um, when you say nonprofit. It, can we use Clearview as an example? Sure, you can. It, Clearview is a nonprofit, right? Yes. And do we give do we give money to Clearview? You do. But yes, you make money, like kind of to put back to balance it out. Is that how that works, or do we give you any money? Franchise fee, we give. Franchise. Okay, what? In but it's franchise. But we don't. If we, does in the warrant out in the warrant when the people vote to give money like they did to this this damn thing. Um, do we give any money? So no. So I'm using a bad example. You are using the wrong example. Yeah. Okay. They so provide a service to the I'm just trying to find out what, what it means to be a nonprofit. Yeah. Uh, do we give money to? You have service organizations like. So do we can, is that uh, considered uh, a non? Uh, is that the same yeah. thing as is is Ooh, what we're talking about to them? Is the two no. the two nonprofits are not the two same? Totally different animals. Right. But see, clear is a little a unique example that doesn't happen. Most of these people come to you during budget season as outside agencies, mm -hmm. and then you discuss with them and you treat them as best you can. Clearview is a unique situation because we set up the nonprofit, but the town actually voted to create a revolving account where the money from the franchise fees from Time Warner come into this account and they sit there and they're used solely for. Uh, administrating the channel and producing content for the channel. It's providing service. I, I think what you're asking, if I'm I can, if I can say, is partially what you're waiting for from town council. It's possible whether, whether the benefits that would be provided to the citizens of the town in Union are the same as the benefits that are available to our residents through giving to VNA and so it's, it's and so uh, back it's back to way so it's, it's, it's really that's part, part of what you're waiting well, for and because and, and, and Clearview does not I mean I want to stress that it does not receive <coughs> property tax and, and, and I'm sorry to you said it's still tax I was thinking cable bill. I was just it's thinking tax. of being a non-profit I'm trying to clock the thought has crossed my mind like what if we needed an extra twenty or thirty thousand dollars and went on TV and said, "Hey, hey. folks, go vote this money in." Yeah. If there was a precedent set, how would you handle that? Yeah. Sure. Well, as sure. far as precedent, uh, when I was on the school board, the school attorneys um, we talked about that a lot, and the school attorney said, uh, "Precedents gets really a bad name because you can set a precedent, but." If you want to do something on the same idea, it doesn't matter what that precedence is because you can vote to do it entirely different. Okay. So, you know. So it's but I don't. Yeah, I don't like to set precedences either. But you know. 
A great question. She's good. Anybody else? Nothing? <laughs> Mr. Fenton? Pretty? Yeah. I was just going to mention that Cotton Mountain Church on Easter Sunday morning, <clears throat> and traditionally since 1852, the churches have all taken turns supporting that church, like St. Anthony's and the mm -hmm. priest up there, and then yep. if, if you know, services in the past. There's some hymn books from the different churches, and so um, you know, that's a historical site. And at 6 o'clock Easter Sunday morning, there'll be a service there. And it's in the town of Oak Grove, right on, on uh, Stoneham Road, and um, a lot of effort from a few people uh, preserving that church. And so, it's a beautiful uh, church. Have, uh, yeah. So to have public uh, participation and attendance there on Easter Sunday morning, <clears throat> and then the following Sunday at the United Methodist Church, we have a um, monthly hymn sing, and that, that church did way back to about the same time as the 1850s. And, um, so I just wanted to okay. you know, three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on. Uh, Hale's maintenance contract. Uh, this must be for the uh, all the um, rec department stuff and the yes. mowing and all that stuff. Yes. And you've already approved the awarding the bid. This is just a contract. It's just a contract. So we, do we need to sign that for you we now? Need to sign it. Yes. So if we've awarded it and we've already gone it through all the systems, do I have a motion on the table to accept it? It was okay. previously voted on. Yep. Yes. Then we not. You didn't vote on the contract, you voted on awarding the bid previously. Awarding the bid. Can I get background on the bid before I sign this? The well, bid. give me a reason why you would need to if, if it's already been awarded. It's just we, we haven't, we just haven't awarded the, I guess, would he be, would he want to be part of it because he wasn't part of it at the beginning? Well, I just want to know what I'm signing before I sign yeah. it. I understand that. Yeah. Um, not or you can recuse yourself if you don't yeah. feel comfortable because you weren't yeah. part of the bid. Right. Yeah, because you know the process of this. Yeah. Now. All of the specs are back there on the payment schedule there, which reflects the bid amount that was approved. On one, or did and we get? Odds. Yeah, it's on. It's did on. we get more than one bid? We put it out for I'm sure. We got more than one mm -hmm. bid, but I don't have that information with me. Yeah, no, I don't want to. There are three. You guys can sign that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd be uncomfortable. I'm not. I'm comfortable with it, too, because yeah, I'm proud of it. Yeah, I am, too. Yeah. All right, so can I have a motion on the table? So moved. I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Yes, I'm standing. No, that's understandable. Yeah, I Yep. You guys do a good job too. Okay. okay. Uh, Midlock Crosswalk, Route 109. Uh, that's by the church, right? Yeah. And the Rosa. It's up, up on the hill? No, up the church. Hill. Well, they, want, they want to put in a crosswalk or just a, a the label in the road? Why not put a crosswalk there? Yeah. Um, if you remember a previous meeting, we had yeah, a, think a, a notice from the state DOT about what their projects were, their resurfacing projects. Mm -hmm. That's an area that they will resurface. That means that they will repaint that crosswalk. Mm -hmm. um, we just have to maintain it, right? Right. We have to maintain the landings. We don't have to maintain the crosswalk. They're reminding, quite frankly, this is in a school zone, so we don't have to do any maintenance on it at all. They're reminding us that it ought to have better lighting. However, they're not insisting that we do that from going forward. They're going to say for any new mid-block crosswalks that we will have to provide lighting mm -hmm. to their specifications. Okay. But it's not, they're not retroactive leaving that. Um, yeah, we, don't, we also have to do the snow removal. On the land, on each on each yeah. Yeah. which, which there's sidewalks down there now. Which do we there's do? on one side. On one side. So they're yeah. putting. They want one on. They're going to put one on yeah, the other side. They're not talking about a, a sidewalk, but there must be a landing over mm -hmm. there. The yeah. Yep. Yep. 
an, a, a place where if you were in a wheelchair that you could get out of the road. Mm -hmm. you know, even if yeah, you good. can't continue Flat down the sidewalk, yeah. you've got to be able to get out of the roadway. Okay. A small way or something. And it says parking shall be restricted. And yeah. Enforced within 20 feet minimum. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. does that mean they're going to put no parking signs on Burroughs Out? No, it would be strictly on 109. There are already no parking signs there. Then we don't have to put any in. We don't, yeah. We At this point, point we, we don't, don't have to do anything. Okay, good. That, yeah. So, do you, does this need a motion to accept? Is this a contract? Uh, we're we're going to have just you sign it, so you might like to have some, have them move to have you execute. All right, so do so I have a motion to someone. execute a signature to accept the thought process behind the crosswalk and school zone changes? I did. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, as for um, Article 20, we're going to skip over that um, due to the lack of... Motion to table. Four to skip. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, you already signed it, though. You have to sign it. I oh, didn't sign it. Yeah, I didn't sign it. Just wrote his name. That's our wonderful select secretary already ahead of me. Okay. New business sludge removal. We must be cleaning out the lagoons. Yeah, you have two bits. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Right. <laughs> Look out, Tom. The official, the official chairman's letter. Look out, Tom. <laughs> He's armed. Uh, Lakes Region at 17.5 cents. This one is at 17 cents. And what was that one at 17.5? 17 17.5 17 plus lab analysis. All right, and this one is 17 cents removal disposal of 20,000 gallon sludge. Lab analysis, certificate insurance. I don't see that. You know, we you know. Here, you look at that and you make it. Who's the uh, We got um, Hardigan. Hardigan and Lakes Region. Lake Region is at 17.5 and Hannigan is at 17. Um, but I'm wondering. I will tell you that we expect to move about 60,000 gallons. So 60,000. Does this say disposal fee at this time of 8 cents per gallon? Does that want to say anything about that? Approximately 20,000 gallons of sludge must be removed. Disposal also. Did we write an RFP for 60,000 gallons? Two times per year. Schedule. All costs from necessary lab must be included into bid. Okay, so this is included in this 17 cents also, the lab yeah. analysis. In the second paragraph. Okay, yes, successful bidder must be licensed and insured. They're both insured. Please contact Mike Susie. Oh, I hate this one now. They're that close. And this is out of where? Yeah. Next Hard to come out Vermont. Vermont. How do they, uh, how do, they do that? They just, they just come down here from Vermont. Vermont. But it's 20,000 gallons, three times three. Uh, let's see, what's the difference you're looking at? Uh, so we need to figure out if that includes the lab analysis. We need to clarify that bid because you well, can't really. All costs were necessary lab and it must yes. be included in the bid. Both of them didn't include that. But one said it was not included, right? And the other no. one just is silent to it? No, the other one's not silent. It has a. It says it's not included to it. Yeah. 
contingent upon analytical testing. It's the same way, contingent mm -hmm. upon lab testing. Yep. Oh, you can't really compare no. this to what you put out. It's in, they're both incomplete. What's up? They're both incomplete according to the RFP. Mm -hmm. Should we put that out? That's what's happened every year. We put it back out? I, I'd have to look, but I think that's what's happened every year. I think we, we just have to, bill for, I think we have to clarify what that means. Because I don't think you, I don't think you want to award it or, or not award it until you have more information. Basically, if this is what they submit every year and then you clarify it, um, I'm assuming we've had sludge removal before and used. Yeah, who's the? Uh, we've, uh, we've, so, he's always he's always been really great right close where it's it's acceptable as as being part of the you know as we've always pushed it. well. I've always pushed a little towards the local if they're that close. So I mean, uh, this this is a little different. They're not clarified enough, I guess. So is Mike wanted to do this soon? Is that something? This is this something that has to be done immediately, or do we have time to clarify this and work back on? Um, he does it at three different times during the year. I'm sure he's getting close to needing to to do one of the. the rooms. And, and what is it, Lino, you saw that it's not meeting the RFP? No, it says it, um, cost of lab analysis on the second page, back page. Not estimated, but yep. both of these have a plus cost. If you look at what's stapled to the folder, Charlie. Yeah, I see, okay. and, and I, I see all costs necessary, lab analysis must be included into the bid. And neither one of them have analysis for it. Right. I don't think it's it's going to be a big deal to wait another couple of weeks. Well, they'd have to come down and take a test and then get the lab analysis and then come back and tell us. So I don't know if that's possible that we they can include. Have we ever done that? I think that we always word that bit the same way, and I think that if I went back, I'd find out that every time nobody actually includes the lab analysis, that it's a separate bill that we pay. But I could be wrong. I don't recall remembering it on the last one because I awarded the last one. Um, is this a one year contract? Yes. Is this for a year? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, since they both left it out, mm -hmm. then they're both equal. Exactly. So. Yeah. What is, the, what's, what is that difference at, at, at half a cent? If it's 60000 I think it's. So. $3,000. $3,000? Yeah. yeah. $3, I mean, and. Seventeen cents. Seventeen cents on sixty is well, it's half 16. a cent. No, it's not five cents. It's half a cent. Half a cent. So we're talking about a sixty hundred thousand dollar project and saving three thousand if we went with the no. seventeen cents. Right. Not Seventeen no. cents no. times sixty thousand gallons. I don't, I don't have a calculator. Yes, on that. I, don't, I didn't bring my cell phone either, so uh, sorry. So we get uh, sixty thousand gallons times seventeen cents, right? Yep. Point one seven. That's ten thousand two hundred dollar bid, and we can save three thousand. That seems like quite a bit. Uh, I I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Three hundred percent. Three hundred percent. I got so to me, Charlie, I don't think that's enough. Charlie, do the next one. Do the next one. Do the seven. Seventeen. 17. Okay, yeah. I see what you say. Sixteen. Point one seven five. Point one seven five. Uh, times. Point one seven five. Times. Three hundred bucks. So is that worth going out of town and not having the money spent? I don't think so. I don't so think so I'm, either. I'm, I'm willing to. This uh, one's quite a ways away. Yeah, and I don't and know where Middlesex is. These people do an awful lot for the community. They donate mm -hmm. a lot to the to the sports and stuff. I make a motion to accept Lakes Region for seventeen point five. Second. So I have a second. Second. Want to discuss it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Good. Yeah, I think that's a great choice.
disposition of tax for acquired property. I don't think we have anything for that at the moment. We actually do. We have five properties. Oh, okay, I'm thinking of it, the, uh, the, the one we took. No, okay. No, that's different. Yep. So we have five properties that are available for auction or bid. Um, it, my recommendation would be we see if we can get somebody to auction them. Yeah, we usually have an auction. Um, Rick usually does an auction in June, usually well, we around did, June. That's when we did the last one. Mm -hmm. And this is this is what we have so far to auction off, and we don't see any more than this. No, because we keep it for I the three. Yeah, we keep it for the three years, so this is what qualifies right now. Okay. Um, have we talked to Rick about? Have not. We want to task what. Doing, How you doing another one? Because this is less than you usually do, so we mm. the auctioneers might not be interested because it's uh, less property, less value. So, yeah, we don't. We usually use Rick as our auctioneer, and he kind of just does it. And he, 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 I think he just charges ten percent above each, so it doesn't cost the town money; it just costs the buyer. Yeah, it's a buyer premium. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes, though, you can't get the auction in years. They're not interested when it's this little money, and so yeah. then we would have to do a sealed bid. I'm just recommending we try to get the auction in years to do it just because I'm brand new, and to do the sealed bid is a little more for us. Yep. Um, yeah. And so if we can get an auctioneer to do mm -hmm. it for the buyer's premium, we can try that first. Yeah, I think okay, see what so Rick says. Ask Rick, yeah. Ask Rick, see if he wants to do it again. I think he, uh, I think he will have no problem doing it, personally. Be good to get them back in the tax rolls. Yep. Okay. okay. Is, is there any more in the pipeline that'll be coming through so we can do one? Not for another year. Not for another yeah. Year. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if there's not any interest and we don't think we can do it, we could always save these and see what comes next June. But it's if we could get them back on the tax rolls a year earlier, mm -hmm. then I, I think that that's. Yeah, usually makes we sense. end up with 10 or 12. It yeah. all depends on what we take in the home. Yeah. We don't want any. No, we don't want any. <laughs> but anyway, we got them. Yep. Okay, so we'll move on. Checkmate payroll power of attorney. And what is that? So the payroll company um, used to source out our quarterly reports and our W-2s. And we had a power of attorney on file with the third party company that did it. And now Checkmate the payroll company is going to be doing the quarterly reports and the W-2, so they need a power of attorney from the town to actually do those. Um, the power of attorney is, is for the IRS, so they were able to file on our behalf. Yep. So do we give it to her as the power of attorney, or do we, are we, we the would, power we attorney? We would give checkmate. Checkmate. Oh, okay. Whoever is filing for them. Does they have all three? Do we do it again? Well, just turn this on. So you guys just make a motion to authorize the chairman to sign the power of attorney on your behalf. Motion, motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. I'll so take, I'll is Stephen C. Robinson? Is that who it would be? Technique payroll services. Who's the main? No, that's who sent us the. That's who sent you the email. Right. So they don't have a name, just technique payroll service. Right. Okay. I just wondered who that was. <laughs> Okay. They do, they're going to do all the state and federal and withholding? Yep. Yes. All the payroll quarterly and year on taxes. Okay. Unemployment? And no. Don't we do our own? We, do, we, we do, do our own do unemployment. unemployment. Yeah. Okay. We'll move on to waiver of administrative fee for a return check. I don't see that, so I guess... You're not going to see anything there. Right. Okay. Motion to accept the waiver of the fee. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Okay. Now, public safety building. Uh, I'll give you a, a lowdown on that. We okay. have a. Where are we, Charlie? Um, what's that? Where are we? The uh, proposed right um, the CRF Capital expenditures. At the public safety bill in phase two, um, we are asking for 27, well, the, uh, the, the police department, the public safety bill is asking for $2,788. That is 
Um, we had to buy the evidence locker now to get it into place before the remainder of the building could get done. So it's, it's clearly an evidence locker, and I will say it's about the width of this table, and it just fits into a closet, and it's so that when evidence is brought in on one side, it gets locked in. They have to have this anyway, but I'll just explain to you what it is. It locks in on one side. The evidence so person is on the inside that takes care of it and files it. He's the only one that can grab it afterwards. Um, but it is something that we've purchased. You've already purchased it? We've, uh, um, I believe it's ordered. Yeah, I think it's already purchased. So this is just asking for the capital reserve fund? To, to, for it to be released out to of the fund. It's already in the, it's in the so you've, already, you've already voted on this coming out? Yeah. Correct. We're just, we're just accepting to pay for it. Okay. It I'll, hasn't I'll been paid for yet. Stand for that as well. Okay. Just um, yeah. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain. Abstain. Okay, the next payment is, the, it's the deposit payment for all the HVAC installation, which has been all completed. Um, so the, uh, the money is there. It's all been voted on. Um, this is what we did last time for Hearts? Correct. And it's, um, he's, um, he's just waiting for a check. Been and it's like I said, it's all been completed as it is anyway. Um, so uh, he's done it. Motion to move twenty thousand out of the capital reserve fund. Yep. For payment. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. To let you know, the HVAC they did a extreme nice job. The condensers are all in. The air conditioning all is outside. Everything's on a pad. It's all ready to go. We're ready to, uh, to start the next process. Um, all the bids are out for all the RFPs are out for the sheetrock, the electricity, the plumbing, the insulation, and the sprinklers. Then we're all due to arrive today, tomorrow, and so on. I've got a walkthrough tomorrow for a lot of those bids, and I believe tomorrow is uh, Friday is the deadline for the um, sprinkler system. On the sprinkler system RFP, was that engineered outside and people are bidding on the same project or was it Correct. a standard set of preset? And it's just standard and, and they, whoever will get the bid, they actually provide the, the engineered drawing that comes, um, they, they make, they, they know what they got, I get the specs, but they, they provide us a drawing afterwards on where everything's located. The, yeah, I know that, but as it, built, you yeah, get an as, as built, built yeah. Yeah, drawing it, after. It, it, did it go out as you know? This is what we're requesting. Correct. For correct, and, and then I do a walkthrough. Then I did a then I did a walkthrough for anybody that wanted to to stop and come and look, so that they're all on the same page. And that and and that is out for bid now, and it's due to Friday, I believe, is the deadline for the for the bids to come in. Okay. And we have one for forty-one seventy-five. Forty. Okay, that that is advertisement for all the everything to be put into the newspapers, I believe. Seven thousand three hundred seventy dollars is what's allocated no, that's, for that. That's a balance, no, I think. That's, that's, balance. that's what's remaining. But forty-one dollars. I, I know that, but this is this what has been allocated for advertising? No. No, no, it's just what's remaining. It yes, it's just what's remaining in the budget in, okay. in the current in the capital reserve. We still haven't tapped into the under um, trust uh, the funds. Yes, that the funds. Right. We had, I don't know, we had thirty, forty thousand 40,000 in it, and that's what we've been using. What's in the right. capital reserve? Okay. I'll so this forty-one dollars and seventy-five cents is purely for okay. advertising all these bids. I make a motion. We accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Charter communications. Change in channel lineup. I think they're just letting us know that uh, yeah. 
channel 114 is no longer available and channel 127 is no longer available. Not really quite sure what it was anyway. Uh, they're changing everything around. So it's not good? No. Not good as far as I'm concerned. Okay, well I'll take your word for it. I just, who? I just memorized all those channels. Who is, who is Charter? Yeah, is that Spectrum? Charter bought Time Warner Cable and they created Spectrum. Spectrum. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, so does that mean the contract, we will be able to renegotiate the contract because they're taking channels away? No. 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 I don't believe so. Okay. No. I'm not no, it's it it took us a long hard. time to mm -hmm. negotiate that contract, too. Yeah. And they still haven't fulfilled yeah. it as no, far they as, haven't. as far as I'm they concerned. Haven't. No, me either. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the motion is just, just no. I think it's just no. no. Notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, yeah. just uh, correspondence. Okay, we have, uh, let's see, Ludren, L Lundren, Lundren, Scott Lundren, he wants to use the Opera House uh, for a uh, administrative bureau hearings for the Department of Safety. Has he, has he talked to Victor and, and that group? Well, I, it's something different. Do I keep going? Sure. Um, rather than get into everything that he's asking for, the, the individual wanting to use the facility ha is working with the Department of Safety on a petition that he presented to them. The Department of Safety says, fine, we have public hearings for that, you find us a location. So Victor may or may not choose to attend that public hearing. But, but is it he has against... nothing to do with our regulations, it's state waters. Okay, so it's 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 a it's a it's a good thing. It's a state public hearing, and okay. they're just basically looking for a place to hold yeah. it in in town for our residents. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that? Do we, do we know? I'm I'm just reading why he's requesting the hearing. It's a, I am in receipt of your petition to restrict rafting on the eastern half of Arthur Fox Dam Cove on Pine River Pond at Wakefield. Mm -hmm. Do we have an issue with that, or is this going to restrict restrict people for well, that's what the hearing's about, right? Right, so exactly. Like they notify they, the, the people. State the state has to hold can, a hearing, and he needs a place in town to hold the hearing. So that the people can come in and hear and, the, right, the issue. And they can take te public testimony and then make their decision. So he's the one that has the issue. He's the one that, that brought the request, and mm -hmm. now the Bureau has to have the a administrative hearing. So whether right. we so give it to him here at the Opera House, they might yeah. come over to Leno's and ask Leno if he can have it there. Right. It's going to happen somewhere. Right. Well, it has, has to happen somewhere. But, um, but you it, don't have to, I mean, you don't have to support, you're not supporting or not supporting the, the subject matter. He's just basically asking you for, to have, for a place to have the public hearing. So as, uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with, but Tony, you have a list of what's I going on. It does not interfere. Okay, good. Well, but, but, but How do you feel about before, the state? Well, before they can schedule a hearing, he needs to verify by certified mail all the butters with deeded waterfront property or deeded water access rights of the proposed change or restriction of the use of that body of water. Has that been done? Well, he has to do that. It's up to the state to make sure he does that. The state will verify that. Yeah. This really has nothing to do with us. It is not our public hearing. And, and they won't schedule that public hearing unless they have the proof from him that he has done what is required for his request. Then when the DOS says, yes, we have every, he's done everything, we'd like a location. That's what I'm getting out of this. Yeah. I don't think we need to approve I, the location before he does all this. No, but he's asking to use but our building. House is so your we're building. just approving, do we want to let him use our building to have this meeting? Um, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I don't either. Um, is he going to provide a, um, insurance or anything like that? The, the state will have to provide us. Yeah, they the state will. The state will. We'll yeah. have a rider and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That I do not know. So I assumed it was for the benefit of our town, so that we can have a, a say in if this is people can. Yeah. If this is something, I mean, it sounds care. to me like something I might not even be agreed upon with the use. It's just take, to take away life, you said take away the rafting, rafting of, a, of the pond. Is that what this it's is by about? By the dam, isn't it? By the dam. Well, is oh. it here? It's in a specific part of it's the dam. It's in a specific area. It's by the dam. 
pandemic. Yeah. It seems to me that it sounded verbally when he called me to ask me what process to follow. It sounded like he wanted to restrict the number of boats that perhaps wrapped together in that area. I see. Uh, but that's up to the people. The people. That's right. Make yeah, and you as selectmen are residents, so you can certainly go and go testify. And it, yeah. it just isn't your. It, it, you're not required to have the public hearing. The state is. So now, if we go and go ahead and allow this to happen, and then they restrict rafting, is that going to affect people's right to use and then property values? It's not going to. Well, we we can't stop this from happening at all. Does the, does the state own great ponds? I mean, if they own ponds, the state owns all water yeah, in the right. state of New yeah. Hampshire. Yeah, to, the be, to the best of my knowledge, they own all water. So I think it's, it, it's just like anything. I mean, it's just giving the people to have a to have a say. Okay. Yeah. They're not yeah. gonna. So right. I'm, I guess I'm in agreement on it. So can I get a motion on the table for, to agree that so we'll moved. allow them? Second. Sure. All right. Any more discussion? No, I'm just saying he has, he has other he has other things to do before he does the hearing. So yeah. he doesn't have a whole lot of time either. Yeah. 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 Wow. So. All right. So, so all in favor to allow him? Aye. 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 Board commission applications. Do we do that in this? There's not any more. Do I do this now, or do we do that in the administrative? Administrative matters. Administrative, administrative updates. One, one more C. public comment. Okay. So we got public comment. Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Mr. Ed Camo. I wanted to officially welcome the new administrator. Thank you, sir. And I just had a question. You don't have to answer it now, but you can get back to me. I was always curious over the years when you auction property off. Mm -hmm. Can you say now how much does the attorney get to do the auction? What value does he get out of doing it? I thought it was ten percent. Ten percent of the like 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 an auctioneer that they, he we don't give him anything. He does it and charges a ten percent fee for all for, over the all bid. Over the bid. Yeah. Over no. the bid. So can I ask what that gets the net amount? Yep. Me. Can I ask what that amount is? On an average? Um, if it's, it would be 10% of the, of the auction price. So an auction pay. price would probably be like six to, probably an average of six to 12,000 maybe on some of these things. I don't think they go for very we much. Have, wait a minute, we can tell you. So you, it would have to be a lot of pieces. Do we that require this? Yeah, and right? the buyer would pay the total. Because they have bought them. It's open what they offer. The total amount assessed value of the properties that we have is $221,000, but we have no way of knowing that people will offer the assessed value on them. So, so, so it's 10% of that. Mm -hmm. My question is, do you... Well, I'm just seeing that in last year's auction where we had a lot, the town realized ninety-six thousand dollars. So I would have to assume that the auctioneer realized nine thousand six hundred dollars from that. But we had four hundred and fifty thousand dollars right. of property, and now right. we have half of that. Yeah. So we we don't potentially will not get that. And the other thing he does uh, that 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 includes the, the title searching and doing all the legwork. Not, not, not title searching, but advertising, advertising, posters, setting up a website, any cost that they have um, for conducting. So it doesn't cost the town people anything. It, it, it costs him, and then he get he gets a fee for the buyer's premium. Yeah. The real value in this is getting it back on the tax rolls. Right. You never when you whether you auction sealed bid you never realize even a percentage of what you know what it's assessed at or its market value or um, well, but it. it's sold as is where it's uh, as well okay. well you took it to, to pay for the taxes that were owed which are not the total assessed value did that answer your question Adam? right yeah well, but we don't my, always my, get the taxes go ahead it has my the final control. question was there's you know there's questions in town why is it always the same attorney that does this do you ever go out to anyone else and bid it out to someone else in order to get the chance to get that? Yes, actually, we did bid it last year, yeah. and and the other um, auctioneer that bid was also offering ten percent buyer's premium. It, it, was, it was the exact same bid. 
That was the um, question I wanted to know. From now, but of course, we, we chose the you know the local man, um, and he has done that for us before. But if I go back far enough, I want to say it was like around '97. We did a, a big auction. We had an awful lot of property, mm. and that was that was not done by auction. Yeah, well, See? it was done by auction. It was not done. I'm trying to remember the name of his actual company because it's not town council, but his company. It was done by McLaughlin auctioneers, I think. Right. So it has happened. Okay. Yeah. So as, as the answer to yours when you're standing there and taking your minutes, yes, we, we've done it and we would, but like she had said that uh, it's not very many, so we probably wouldn't it's barely mm -hmm. worth anybody's time as it is. Okay. Okay? You. You're welcome. Public comment over? Close. Close public comment? Close public comment. Town administrator's update? Yep. So we need to have a public hearing on invasive species sometime in May. Would you like to do that on May 10th or May 24th? Your first no meeting matter, thing, the Don't matter. Don't Have they, have they uh, all nothing. put in for their, their requests? Well, they all gave it to us. They give it budget. to for during budget season, so it's all been approved. We just they just come in and we figure out how mm -hmm. to divide it. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully that'll be self-explanatory. Yep, usually is. All right. So, do you want me to just take a look at your future agendas and just schedule it for one of the May meetings? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we had a request from Scamp. Um, this is their, is it 40th anniversary? It is. Mm -hmm. 40th <coughs> anniversary show, and they would like to put up more posters than usual. Um, and she just wanted to make that request. Um, we where did she want to put them? Everywhere. You know, wherever she usually does, but just more of them. Oh, okay. I don't care. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. going to have some people come back in this room. Yeah, my daughter's one of them. Yeah, no, I'm good with that. You're okay. You okay. good with that, Renal? As long as we don't have any ordinances that say otherwise, yeah. We're talking about the kids having scam. Hey. I don't care if it's ordinances no. or not. We're talking about have... posters. We're not really talking about permanent Sign. signs. Yeah, no, we have ordinances. Well. No, no, and I think okay. she'll be careful not to damage yes. yeah, walls right. and things. But yeah. and, and not put them on. Yeah, on your, how about on your window? Window? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. One on I think a nice big one on there, right next to the big front sign. They do it every year. Okay, so you're okay with the scam yeah. posters. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I had is um, my employment contract. Mm -hmm. um, I have some negotiating I'd like to do with you, and I just wanted to ask you if you would like me to negotiate in a non-public session directly with you three, or if you would like me to go back to the town attorney and have a chat with him so that he can vet it and bring it back to you. Um, I, I'd like to do that in any, whatever way you want to do it. I think we ought to do it in non-public with us three. Me too. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so I will schedule that for your next meeting for non-public. Okay. okay. And that's all I had. You want to plug me, Johnny? Okay. Well, we actually have section G. We also we have a scheduled non-public session that we could possibly do that. Yeah, I did not bring the contract oh, okay. because I thought you were going to have a. I thought it was going to be a late night, and I didn't want to. We'll get it back. Okay, out. so build. All right, so. Um, you have no building permit releases. Well, I'm just going to. I'm looking at these. Do we want to do these applications? Yep, we're going to skip. We're going to skip. Oh, okay. Membership reports. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Okay. So no building permit releases, Tony. Right. No. Okay. Um, membership membership agreements, uh, appointments. I have one here for Greg Hall, and I am assuming that's the rec department, uh, the rec department commission. Yeah, um, the commission, yeah. He's been on it forever. I, I would make a motion to well, accept we, we Greg have Hall. Two, so why don't we both do both at the same time? Gloria Belanger is also Parks and Rec. Okay, yep. Gloria Belanger, I'm good with that. Okay. I'll, vote for that both. I'll make a motion that both, they both be accepted. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're going to sign them. Start signing. Um, we also have one for the Board Conservation Commission for Martin. Donna Martin. And? And? Ralph Fogg. Ralph Fogg. Donna as an alternate, Ralph is as a member. 
Okay, so let's do them separate. Donna is an alternate. Donna Mountain. Is that Donna? This Donna? Yes. Well, yeah. congratulations, Donna. I, I'll make a motion to accept Donna. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ralph Fogg. Um, I'll make a motion to accept Ralph. Oh, the second. Second. And Ralph is as a full time member. Um, all in Oops. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, this is uh, pretty lengthy, this one here. <laughs> uh, <I'm not> sure. <laughs> she gets yeah. into everything. <laughs> not sure what this one's all about, but I'll... Uh, it's on the Heritage. It's the Heritage she Commission. Be, she wants to be a docent. And what is that? Yeah. That goes in and tells um, all about the, the train station oh, okay. and all yeah. the buttoning, and she knows, she's got the knowledge. But that's not what this is for. This is as a member. This is as a, a member, member of the Heritage Commission. Okay. And she wrote down, down here that... You she know, wrote down quite a bit of information. Yeah, she always does. Okay, so, um, uh, so for Heritage Commission full-time member, Annette Perry, do we have a motion on the table to accept? So moved. Second? Second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a treasurer's warrant payment manifest for $70,590.09. Do is I have a motion the on the table to accept that? Is that the school? No, nope, this is um, no. 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 Fish, Depart, fish and Game, no. No. the Air Conditioning Treasurer of New Hampshire. What is that? That's no. the manifest. I signed this on the wrong line, Charles. Okay. I took your line. I don't mind being county for one day, okay? <laughs> okay, that's right all. Just one day. I'm sorry, did I miss the motion? I was going to say, I think I missed I, the motion. We didn't, we didn't even go. Uh, we didn't I, think get one. I thought I'd just space No. Out. Do you need one? Yes, I need a motion to accept the, the 70... Uh, so moved. Uh, the $70,590.09. That's Second. payroll. Is that payroll? This looks like payroll. It's uh, it goes to the state, a little bit of state stuff, and um, this is the twenty thousand for the uh, public safety, um, treasurer of state, fishing game department. So yeah, that's yeah. Good. it's not a payroll. It's yeah. just that AP that had to be done at the first mm -hmm. of the month to yep. some of the timing. Yep. So we got a first. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Honey moved Aye. it. Oh. <laughs> Aye. We, somebody you else second has it? got to second it. Because I moved the motion. Oh, all right. Second. Thank all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Here, let me know. Um, I need your signature on that one. And I have them all on this one. Um, yep. So this one looks like it pays benefits as well. Heritage Fidelity Health Trust. These are the things that uh, you should have got this AP in your email mm -hmm. from uh, our treasurer, our uh, financial. Mm -hmm. These are going to be these, the pair, these are the payroll taxes, aren't they? Is this what you're looking at now? Yeah. I sent me to payroll for them. We'd have to have Michelle break it down. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I can't, I can't look at it right. Yeah. Charlie, we, did we already give uh -huh. Moose Hart a check on the sixth? Yes, just just got it just got issued. Yes. So we just voted on releasing that check, or releasing already, it. already released. Yep. Thank you. Okay, I got a big one. This, is, mm -hmm. this, this is must be a school warrant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, $726,758.42. Do I have a motion to accept that one? Put it out to me. What is that for? This is for the school. This has well, got the school everything. The payment is in there. The school payment's in there. This probably has, this is everything in this book that you got as an email. Did you look at your email? Huh? Is this a test? <laughs> it's a test, yeah. we know. This is a big one. I want to know. Did you I look? Make a I'm going to look at it right now. Okay. 
Yeah, I'll I don't trust second anything it. that comes by yeah. email. If I can't put my hand on it, it doesn't exist. And I'll second it, and I'll let you look at it if you want to hold off. I, I want to look at it. All right. Make sure we're it. not paying for anybody's. Uh, you better look. It's silly, harder to look at stuff. it that way than it is on your email because it's all just listed. Mm. That's hard to, to look at each file folder. It's been three weeks since we did a. Eight oh, this is uh, this is every week. Bills, all our bills. Yeah, 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 heritage, cable, recreation, yep. yep, sewer. And everything. it'll tell you here where, how much for school. Most of it is when it's that big of a number yeah. in school. It was three. 300,000, 200,000, something. I can't remember. I read it, but I can't remember. Just want to make sure we're signing what we're signing. Yep. I already looked at them today. Mm -hmm. Check them out. And you saw no Don't see anything that okay. would stand out. Motion to accept? Or would you all right guys already do that? We got a first and a second. Okay. We're waiting for Go. you all set. Go. Yes, all in sir. favor? Aye. Aye. Well, you know, this is just town clerk stuff. I mean, I you can look at that. We sign that every that. week. This is what Valerie has to send in. Charlie, I don't yes. believe you guys moved the table with the table. Which one was that? That's. Seventy-four thousand six eighty-six point. I didn't see that. No, one. I don't have that. <laughs> so moved. Yep. Yeah. Second. Oh, you don't want to check that? I already did. All right. Make sure I don't want to recognize any dead people's names on that. No. Okay. Like All in sound. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We can sign them all. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There. Okay, we get to separate this one because I think uh, this one we uh, Lino wasn't part of uh, the December thirteenth board Charlie, meeting. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you yeah. because what I did is give you some backup of minutes there that had to do with Article Twenty. That's not something you need right. to approve. That was from yep. Article Twenty. This one? Yes. That's so we don't have to accept this one. No. no. Just okay. the, you know that was just background. Okay. Uh, that's that one. All right, so we got the minutes, uh, and Lino, you was part of this, March 22nd. Uh, yes, I was. Non-public and thing. Um, I didn't see anything that I felt was out of line then, so. I make a motion we approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, the, we're going to move into what my little work session thing is. I just wanted a, cu a couple of things to go over with you. Um, I don't know if you know it, but you do. Um, the elevator is in a little bit of trouble. It's not the elevator itself. Thank you. It's, it's the mess that's in there. Um, I've looked into it. A few times, and with a few people, and uh, I've got some kind of idea which direction to head. The elevator shaft, at the bottom of the elevator shaft, we have a hole in the floor that a sub pump sits into, which means the excess water come, that comes underneath the ground has a place to go and be sub pumped and pumped out into mm -hmm. the system. There's another hole in the floor where the shaft goes down into the ground 30 feet that holds, that moves the elevator. That hole doesn't have a sub pump. So what's happening is the water is filling that hole and it's coming up and laying across the, um, the concrete and it's forming stagnant water and very smelly water. Stinky, Stinky water. Um, so I called Sir Pro because I think I can solve the problem um, the problem I think should be solved is from that one hole we need to make a small trench so that when that water rises up it leaks, it runs over to the sub pump and then it gets pumped over. The problem is, is it's laying on the floor and it's not staying contained. I need to contain it into a trench, move it over to that way and then it'll go. The other problem is, is that it's been sitting with so much water down there for so long that it's caused a lot of... Um, I'll just call it what I call it, just muck. It's, it's just muck. And it's very thick and it's all over the pump. So we may end up replacing the pump. And it is uh, it is some pump 
it is a pump that may should get at least looked at yearly, maybe even replaced yearly. It's not an expensive part. It's just a sub pump you could buy at any hardware store and, and okay. you can put in. Um, but do I think it should be pumped? Do I think it probably get replaced every year? No. Once I contain it and the water doesn't go above it or, or, or lay around it and cause muck, I think that will solve that where we wouldn't have to. But this time I actually think that we would be better off to replace it. Now, I haven't got to the point of replacing right now. I, we, I called Serpro in because I felt they could be the best Santa, best mm -hmm. cleaning agent that could get it so that it was much cleaner. It has the, the kids downstairs, the school. I felt it was very important to maybe call in somebody. And I have a cost here. Um, and how Tony and I were reading it, it looks to me like it's $1,092 mm -hmm. to do a complete spray heated uh, steam clean and sanitize and, and that kind of thing and I think it would be very valuable. So that's the direction I'm pushing at the moment and then I thought that um, I would come down with one of the, um, uh, Lee said that he'd come and help me, they have a, a saw cut. We can cut a three foot sloth, a little deep, a couple inch deep, just chisel out the concrete, give it a a river to be able to run into the other thing and then maybe I would I thought of sealing up that hole but I personally don't think that we can ever seal up by dumping concrete in a hole really doesn't seal up the that that crack that cracks still gonna leak water so I'm thinking let's give the water a place to run yeah. and it'll keep it up so it's gonna always have moisture there's um I did notice that some of the wiring down there is extremely rusty but there's only one outlet so it's just a pipe just a conduit pipe with one outlet that they need in there that probably ought to be addressed just because it's, it's really rusty in the water level. Um, so I'm hoping to solve that in the near future. So that's the direction I'm heading with that and uh, I think I can tell Tony that um, we can set up a time that Serpro can come because I've got to set up a time at the same time that the um, the elevator company Stanley. Stan, that Stanley that does our maintenance has to be here because he's licensed to hold the elevator stable while we work underneath it. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be a fee that they charge, I would imagine, for standing mm -hmm. there while this uh -huh. application is being done. Did he give a time frame on how long this will take? This here? Yeah. Oh, I can't imagine. I think they got it down to time, but I don't think it's more than a few hours or you know that day. Um, we just got to cross. We just got to right. make it so that both of them. Um, can be there at the same time. And then then we'll have to, I mean, if it was something that I could get where I could do, stay right there and work the same day, help help me figure out the trench thing, it would be, but I think it's there's enough of a second day that we'd be better off to try not to do it all in one day, do the, do the maintenance work the second day, that way I could have the, um, the plumber there and the, um, the electrical guy. And you're Looks like he's planning seven and a half hours. Seven and a half hours. So, that's so then take, that would be a full day at Stanley. That'd be a full Andrew day. Too. That's why it would so be too much to for ask one day. Mm -hmm. So yes, there'll be a fee for them to stick that Stanley guy and I'm not sure what that is, but I will find that out so that we have a total cost of the, the project, but the rest of it can be done by in-house. Um, would we need Stanley there for the second day? Yes, yes. we're gonna need, because we can't do anything underneath that. Mm -hmm underneath that why okay. that's standing. He has to be there so he, he has a certain tool that he opens it up and yeah. locks the elevator. Um, this has all been pushed that the state is required that we fix this uh -huh. or they will shut it down. Uh -huh. So um, he was nice enough to just let us go and he knew that I was on to it so he yeah, was allowing it to just um, to be maintained, you know, just to, to be still usable because it's still used. There's no water in there. I mean, as in the, the elevator goes down into a bunch of water, that's gone. It's just, it's just nasty. It's been sitting there for months and months and months. Who knows how long it's been yeah, sitting there? Probably. Years. And it's starting to have a smell older down there in the kids in the library down below needs to be. So it's becoming a public health nuisance. It's becoming mm -hmm. a public health nuisance. So I take it to myself to, to come up with this. Tony called Serpro, we had them come out. Um, we won't go any further than that. I, wish you, that, I mean, that's, this is where I'm heading. This so it's gonna be a package, we're gonna put a package together. I'll put something this. together and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, the... Um, I've got something when you 
Okay, okay. go ahead. Um, we were supposed to write down goals. Yep. And I just wrote down one. Okay, that's okay. That is very important to me. And what might that be? And to work for all department heads, to work to make sure policy is being followed by everyone. Everyone alike. Everyone. Okay? And that's important. It is important. It is because important. Because we kind of have off and on just really not really delved into our policy and how things are supposed to be done. And I think we need to correct that. I think we need to make sure all employees know, all department heads know, what our policies are and that everybody will be treated the same according to our policy. If for any reason something comes up and we need to change it, we as selectmen can do that. But right now we need to follow what our policies are. What our policies are now. Yep. Um, so, would we, so do we take and copy our policy for each department and send it to them so that they... I think they have it. Don't, doesn't so everybody they have, have copies of our policy? Well, are we talking personnel policy or are we talking... Um, both personnel and other policies that we have um, regarding how we should govern the town of Wakefield, and how we use those as examples mm -hmm. of what we should be doing. I think, doesn't every employee have a copy of that? Yeah, every, every new employee is supposed to sign off on the personnel oh, policy personnel before policy. they come in. Oh, right, yeah. Um, hmm. I'm still wondering specifically what other policy. Any policies we have. What do you feel, what do you feel that we're not following it, I guess? Um, we, do you feel that we're no. not following something? Um, sometimes we just go ahead and do something and we really don't look into the policy of how it should be done. Okay. And uh, I think, you know, we're all guilty. Uh, I think we need to adhere to it more when we're making decisions, like on the personnel policy. The purchasing um, policy. Purchasing, purchasing. yep, yeah, even mm -hmm. purchasing. Whatever policies that we have, we need to follow. So maybe when we set up our agenda, if we have something that we must follow, maybe Tony could have the policy for that item available so that we make sure we read it before we make it a decision. That'd be a lot of extra work. Well, if, 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 we, if, should, if, if, we should be familiar with our policies, but, you know, we do have a lot of policies, so I'm not sure. Well, I think if, if most likely it wouldn't be more than one or something, of, uh, um, like this purchasing of the, of the truck, let's say, would that be under a policy? Hmm? We so, have a purchasing policy. So yep. we should we should look at that purchasing policy. Maybe have that in our folder um, on the next one to, for us to make a decision which direction to go. Yeah, that might help. I'm I'm assuming that we require purchase order for anything that large. So oh, that would be that. part of the yeah. policy that mm -hmm. make sure they. Yeah, I think that's in the purchasing. I think they're. I yeah. think that's reference Kelly. Specific. Thinking maybe we create a minor. Mm -hmm. Do we have a, do we, in the policy, is there a specific number of bids that must go? Uh, when practicable, yes. When practicable. Mm -hmm. So when, when of course, uh, yeah. sometimes you can't get that many right. bids. That yeah, yeah, Freightliner won't bid, won't compete with each other. He isn't going to be able to get, I mean, he may be able to get Freightliner in Maine to give him or Freight, Freightliner in mm -hmm. Mass, but. Um, not in New Hampshire, no. Not, okay. not another Freightline dealer in New Hampshire. But I think that all, all towns policy, purchasing policies, when they require bids, do practicable. And sometimes it's, you know, you put it out to bid and you get one bid or you get two bids or, I mean, it's always better if you get three or four. But yep. That's well, you try to get as many as you yep. can, but um, sometimes it, uh, it doesn't happen. We have before only getting one or two and it's because it's really, they're not big anyway. 
I think Kelly can help us with that also because she knows a lot about policies. She's worked with them all her years of experience and I think she can help us with that. Um, I think if, I would hope that if we were doing something that was against our policy, I hope, we would hope you'd tell us that we're not yeah. doing that right because we, you know, we can make mistakes and we can get ourselves in trouble. No, I, no, I wouldn't no. put any, I, I wouldn't put something before you that broke your policy. And no. if there was a reason that I thought you needed to, to break your own policies, I'd make you aware of it and mm -hmm. explain why yeah. we couldn't adhere to the policy. So, um, and, and I mean, it's similar to putting stuff before you to sign. I wouldn't put something before you to sign that I didn't think you should sign or that I didn't think you should to vet carefully or. You know, I would recommend you put it through the attorney if it's a new mm -hmm. contract that we've never seen before. Um, so yeah, I mean, I and I'm just starting to familiarize myself with all your policies, so I can't, mm -hmm. I can't right. speak to them. Yeah, specifically. No, I understand yeah. what you're saying. Maybe you know, like, and if and, and I'm sure now t if Tony sees that we might need a policy to reread as we make a decision, she can bring it up for us. Um, I did have a bunch of goals. Um, oh, mine, mine are more into um, making things and, 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 and doing the things that I've been doing, um, such as finishing the public. My biggest one is finishing the public safety building. Um, and I'm on track to do so. The other thing will be to working with the departments on the transfer station. And uh, um, I believe Ken Ball still wants to be included in that and I'd be more than glad to keep mm. him included into that. The transfer station. Yeah. The transfer station. He's got a lot Getting of that. Yep. There were some issues there this week, and uh, we definitely we we we, we got to look into that. And I believe that's next on Lee's list also to be yep. more involved. There's another thing is I believe that this town needs a little public parking down towards the lake. Um, there's an awful lot of boat parking and and trailer parking on the side of the street, and they oh. utilize a lot of the local businesses. Such as uh, maybe Tumble Down Dick. Uh, uh, the, Tumble Down Dick. What is that? Tumble Down, down Cafe. Cafe. Come on. Tumble right. down that's, down. The that's the mountain. That's the mountain. Tumble Down Farms. Yeah, Tumble Down Farms. And then the Poor People's Pub gets a lot of backlash yep. out of that. So, to do the light. So, my thoughts were that we have that piece of land out behind Tumble Down, but I don't know if that's wide enough. It's just something to think about that uh, we might think about a little bit of a public park and or at least a place where. We talk, at least a place to direct them to have a sign or something that says public parking. I think there's a little bit of parking on the other side of the police station, just beyond the, the, the far side. There's a little pull off there, but um, I see a lot of trailers in the summer that take an awful lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, that I, I definitely want to stay up with the town hall maintenance. I feel the town hall should get, should, the town hall is an old enough building that needs a lot of a lot of attention. Um, I did notice a couple of leaks recently in the roof. It's coming down into the ceilings. Um, I'm addressing that now. Um, but there's uh, there's some things we need some lights changed upstairs. So we get a lot of a lot of town hall is an old building. It needs to be it needs to keep up with maintenance. Another thing that I thought that we're lacking um, is lifeguard. Um, I'm not positive on which direction to go with that, mm. but I know that it's always been a, a talked about. I have talked about it with Wayne, the rec department. He thinks it's a great idea, but there's still there's some things that I think that we should change um, in order to have that. I don't think it's a bad idea, but I'm not positive. It's it's the it's nothing that will happen this year, but it's something that I think we should start thinking about. Um, I don't want it to be a babysitting clinic, um, but I also think that uh, that's a nice beach we have down there, and I'd like to see it stay clean. Would that open us up to um, liability if we provide a liability? No, it, um, as far as I know, and we've done, we have talked about that. I think that uh, um, you know it does it does raise the level, but I don't think it raises the level for us. I don't think anybody, I don't think we pay extra because we have it, uh, liability and all that insurance stuff. It was always pretty, pretty Safe reasonable. Safe swim at your own risk. I well, don't you, know. Take out, you'd have to take that off. If you're yeah, but I believe studying about it, 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 it really, 
talking to Wayne and them, it really doesn't bump the thing enough that you would think. I think the biggest thing is who you put down there. Mm. If you have kids, you'll always have kids. I think that it's more of a, an older position, not an older as in, in any age. I'm we, just we saying would, more we, responsible. We, we wouldn't be able to more talk about age. Correct, I didn't say age, I'm just saying a more responsible um, patron uh, or an employee th to have that wouldn't be sitting there as a child. Um, the other thing that uh, I think in the next five years probably is, is, the, uh, is the rec department. Um, I've always thought that we need, I've always been part of the rec department here and uh, I think that that's something that they have a committee for now and they're working on the future of it. I'd like to be more involved in that and uh, and to um, to start talking about uh, the future of our rec department. We have a big rec department and, it, and they do very well, but I think um, more functional, more for everybody and not just children. It would be more for a lot of other people compared to just children playing sports. And they do, they went to the soccer They do, game. yeah, they do a lot. Um, and there's some things that need to we we need to start thinking about is bathrooms and and, uh, and maybe some concession stands or something that they can generate a little money to offset the money that they that they get. They can do an awful lot if they had some had some tools to do it. Um. So them are them are my goals. I thought about your homework, and I think when I, once I become more. Aware. Aware of what's yeah. going on in town, the things that need to be fixed. I think I'll have better ideas. And I'm good with that. Um, but I just kind of wanted to, us to start thinking about mm -hmm. some things that we might want to, some pet peeves that we might want to do or correct or, or anything like that. Um, oh, actually, I do think we need to um, talk about the these um, department a little bit. We'll have an... Um, Maybe a backup plan in case all the trucks happen to break down on something. Something that, I mean, a, a backup plan in case something catastrophic happens to the trucks or you fall behind. So, like an emergency management emer yeah, project. Yeah, something like that. Uh, such as if something wants to have some, have some scenarios right. and have a routine. Right, because I mean, the, the last time there was two trucks down and they were plowing with the small truck and weren't keeping up. Yeah. Could have we, do we have a short list of people that could help out? Could call in. Could call yeah. in on a, on a short call. notice yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Just to, you know, if, if they're not fight, you know, plowing out the fire department on a regular basis, they can't get out. I'm Stuff making like an that. emergency management office say it down at the public safety building. We might be able to put that to I'm work. Huh? That might be something to think about. Um, and, and the and the ongoing um, problems that we have around the world, we might, we might need a little more emergency plan. Yeah. And I thought that we were going to... Um, ask a little more involvement of some of our representatives to do some uh, some talking at once or twice a, uh, a semester or, or something. Did we talk about that one time, Mr. Kamal? That we thought that maybe we might have a little more correspondence from the from the representatives of our community. You will every meeting. Yes, we got one right here. <laughs> I know, but are they? Um, which is good now, I guess, yep. so that we'll have more more input from what's going on at the state level. Yes. We got two thirds of the representatives. Yes, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, so that big budget vote go this week. But anyway, Miss mm -hmm. Kelly, <laughs> what did you think? Everything seemed to be okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think yeah. everything's going to be just fine. Um, anything you'd like to ask us? No, I don't think so. I appreciate the town welcoming me. Well, we do. People have been we, fantastic. We, we definitely great, great welcome town. you. let us know if anybody hasn't been there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't think you're going to have that problem. I think that you'll find that this town is much in to welcome you and you along. So, um, Tom, this is our new administrator, yeah. Kelly Collins. Hi. Tom is on the board, that's right. Do you guys have um, a second public comment? Nope. We're all going to buy it. We're going to buy it. You missed it. 
Do you have something quick to say? I, I do. I just want you to know that um, the Wakefield, Greater Wakefield Chamber of Commerce and the Pride of Wakefield Volunteers is going to have a, uh, a sign unveiling or yep. revealing on the 22nd. Yep. Over the corner. I think I have that down at 11 o'clock. On the 27th, 11 a.m. This is at 109. Yep. What day would that be on? Saturday. 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 So that's a day that uh, um, anybody else would have to want to come to it, I guess. I will always send my regrets because I'll be working. Well, I, I mean, I'll probably go, but I was thinking maybe yeah. Kelly might, might want to go, but uh, yeah, it's only yeah, yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. What's that? Huh? All you want. <laughs> yeah. um, very good. Is that it? That was it. Thank you, sir. Motion to adjourn? Second. You already moved that. It's just a sign. Okay. Well, that was quick. All in favor? I'm Aye. rolling up on 9 o'clock. Oh, come on. <laughs> huh? No it's more. so warm in here, we're steaming up the windows. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, that's right. up the windows. It is very warm in here. Glad we best on Put on the agenda for next uh, next year. Okay. <laughs> We've been talking yeah, about it. Yeah, I'm going to watch him like a hawk. I'll be right now.